Thank you, Sharif. Um, first of all, um, hopefully, just to, before I start, some of you guys that maybe he was talking about with the seconds and thirds, I hope it's not the wrong guys. <laughs> we have a lot of fit guys that can go up a couple times, but there's a few that should be watching what they're eating. Okay, and you guys know who you are. Um, I don't know if Dr. Esterberg's still here. I just wanted to thank you for sharing some words with us tonight. It's always good to see you. Sometimes I don't get to see you too much when I'm bouncing around. I do see you at the games and stuff, but it's nice to have my athletes get to see you a little bit. So thank you. Um, before I start with Rashawn, um, I'd like to congratulate Nancy uh, on your induction. Um, obviously, I didn't have a chance to see you play, but we've heard about you and some of the other players. and. Uh, you're recognized over at Maxi in the arena, so it's always nice to see that. So congratulations to you. Um, also, um, the other Hall of Famers who are here, I know you were recognized earlier, but I'd like to give a special uh, congratulations to Neil Johnson, who was one of my mentors back in the day. Sharif says he'd like to hear some stories. I mean, we got to get together because <laughs> I got a lot of them. Um, but Neil's the person that hired me to come here uh, many years ago when my hair was dark and it's starting to gray a little bit. But uh, Neil's a very special person to me, somebody I've always looked up to. So thanks, Neil. <laughs> On to the big guy here. Um, first of all, I'd like to. Uh, Thank Rashawn's mom, Faith, and dad, Matt, for coming tonight. So thank you very much. And as well as his girlfriend, Allie. It's good to see you again, too. Another former bear. Um, one thing I'd like to start with is, um, as coaches, we're, we're blessed with um, not only athletes, great athletes, good athletes, average athletes, but we're, we're blessed with special people. Um, and I think, you know, Rashawn was one of those guys for me. You know, he, he should have been a captain as a sophomore. And I think that really shows in his parents and how he was raised and his leadership abilities uh, when he first got here. And uh, parents like his making the long road trips, and you guys made a lot of road trips coming up here when we are on the road. You know, you were at a lot of games. and. Uh, you know, being a dad myself now, it's people like you that I look to to try to raise something like you've raised. You know, just a great kid, great student, great athlete, great person. Um, so tons of credit to you guys for Rashawn. Okay. Now the athlete. Um, so... I want to give a little breakdown. I know it's written in the uh, brochure and things of uh, Rashawn's career, but I'd like to at least just mention a little bit about um, his career and what he accomplished um, as an athlete. 2009, he was first here in his first year. He was a long stick midi when he came in. I, we had a chance to uh, introduce Rashawn to our team in the locker room today after uh, practice. And uh, you know, first thing I said, he was a skinny 150 pounder. You know, ridiculous athlete, you know, but, you know, he had to play long stick midi. His first year he wasn't strong enough, guys, to be honest, you know, to play close defense. So he played long stick midi, started every game, um, was obvious rookie of the year for our team. Um, you know, no all conference, anything his first year. His second year in 2010, um, played another year long stick midi. He was a little bigger, a little stronger, not quite there yet for the close defense. We had some really good defenders at the time uh, that, that did a nice job there. So, a lot of you guys know my long stick middies, you know, similar to Colby and other guys, they get a lot of playing time. You know, I'm not, you know, if we got a great long stick middie, they're going to play a lot, you know, and, and the guy that's backing them up is going to, you know, wait his turn a little bit. And Rashawn did that and uh, had a great year as a sophomore and was honorable mention all Suniac. It was kind of like his breaking out that year. Um, unfortunately, we moved him to close defense a little bit because we lost his athleticism in the middle of the field the next year in 2011. Um, but by then, all his work in the weight room, and he was totally dedicated. He was a physical specimen by his junior year. 
And uh, that was a year that he really had a breakout year. Just a list of things that he accomplished uh, his junior year, not only leading our team to the Sunyak Championship game that year against Cortland, um, he was a t team captain as a junior, um, team MVP, first team Sunyak, player of the year in the Sunyak, and an All-American as a junior. You know, those are things that when I share those words with everybody here, I hope that the guys on our team here um, you know, really appreciate that and set some goals for yourself because it's amazing what he accomplished that one year in switching over to close defense. We, we would have never made the Sunyak championship that year if it wasn't for Rashawn. Single-handedly was the guy that took us okay, to, to one of the best seasons I've had in 25 years and literally shut down multiple All-Americans on the defensive end of the field. So when it came to the end of the year and they had to vote for the player of the year in the Sunyak, and we were the number two team after losing to Cortland in the championship, the ballot had all these flashy attackmen from Cortland and Brockport and Oswego and all these other places. And I just simply on his ballot put the stats that those guys had against Potsdam. When we were all done, of those six games, he gave up two assists to the guys that he was guarding. And we did not slide to help Rashawn. Rashawn was on an island. So our guys knew when Rashawn's guy got the ball, just guard your guy, he's good. And that's what happened, and that's how he became the Sunyak Player of the Year that year. So heading into the next year, we were stacked. We got to the Sunyak Championship. We brought in some really good transfers. We had a lot of good guys back, and we ran into a couple injuries. And Rashawn was one of the guys that kind of got banged up. Um, had a little knee injury, really slowed him down the first half of the season. Uh, but he battled through it and came back. Um, ended up being second team Sunyak All-Star that year. Um, after being, you know, in the preseason watch list, um, heading into that year, U.S. Lacrosse Magazine, lacrosse on all this stuff, Rashawn Durden, Rashawn Durden, Rashawn Durden, you know, you're Sunyak Player of the Year, you're going to get a lot of hype. You know, so the senior year was pretty tough because it just wasn't able to happen because he missed some games. But he did battle back and he came back and he still made second team uh, Sunyak as a senior. He got healthy for the conference games, but just missed the games before that. So it was kind of tough for him to get back on the All-American team. So, and he's also named his senior year the Maxi Molnar Award um, as a senior male athlete, um, both as a scholar and an athlete. You know, we've had some guys win that award before, but he, he had the academics and the athletics that, uh, that really stood out. And it was a pretty obvious choice that year, I believe. I don't think it was um, much of a race. So after his playing career, I convinced him to stay. He wasn't sure he wanted to. Rashawn was one of those guys that was, when he was playing, he was all in. When he wasn't playing, he was doing something else. You know, and that's one of the beauties of Rashawn. He had other things and other interests. You know, but we convinced him to come back. I knew he'd be a great coach. He was such a great leader that we got him to come back and be a graduate assistant, which he you know, did his master's degree and you know, led on to the career that he's doing today. But we had two great years together. Uh, we really grew as, as friends. You know, it's different when you're done playing for somebody and then you're working with them. And trust me, Rashawn could tell you some of the conversations we had in my locker room. Man, coach, I didn't know it was like this. You know, motivating these guys every day when it's 35 degrees and raining sideways. Like, how do you, I don't know, Rashawn, I don't know how I do it. It's hard. You know, I have a big staff, they help me, it's, it's not easy. Um, but anyway, we had two great years together and uh, went to the playoffs both years and uh, just success followed him. You know, and it was easy for him to coach the guys that he played with because when he played, he wasn't like that guy that had to go to this party and had to go do this thing. He took care of what he had to take care of. He took care of his grades, he spent time with his girlfriend, stayed in touch with his parents. He, he, was a, he was a leader, just a natural born leader. So when he came over to play, or coach, it was just so easy for him. You know, and his first day, he wasn't nervous about telling a guy that he just played with a year before. He'd get right in his face and let him know he's doing it wrong. He's just how you do it. You know, that was just a personality that he had. So that, that was a great couple years with him. Um, just to wrap up a little bit here, I don't want to go too long, but currently, um, Rashawn is at Yale University, you know, so for everybody here, 
it, it's possible. SUNY Potsdam is a great education, can lead to great things. For Rashawn to graduate from SUNY Potsdam, move to North Carolina, get a great job, advance himself to Yale University, the Ivy Leagues, the pinnacle of higher education is where he is right now. He's got a long way to go. He's going to do some special things. There's no question. Um, super proud, you know, super honored to introduce Rashawn Durden, 2019 Hall of Fame inductee. Thank you, Rick. Um, I first want to start by congratulating Nancy as well. We were at Potsdam during different times. Um, but I had a chance to read through your bio and see some of your achievements, and it's an honor to be inducted with you tonight. When I first found out that I was going to be inducted into this year's Hall of Fame class, I immediately started thinking back to all the great times I had at Potsdam. I think anybody who knows me or, or knew me then um, knows that I really enjoyed being a college student um, at this school. I had a lot of great times in this town, and I really found the college experience that I was looking for at Potsdam. Uh, but it wasn't until I started talking to Dan for the inductee profile that he writes every year uh, that I really started thinking back to the four years that I spent playing lacrosse here um, and what this honor really meant to me, means to me. And it's just a great end to that career um, and, and really just adds to the memories I've had in this town. I just want to use my time to thank some of the people uh, that were there for me, not just while I was playing lacrosse, but to this day. I first want to start with Rick. Um, I, I think every guy looks for something different in a coach, whether that's great knowledge of the game, um, somebody they enjoy being around, maybe a father figure. And I think Rick's all those things to different guys. But the quality that I really appreciated um, about playing for Rick was just his desire to win. I think anybody, and I'm sure a lot of you here, grew up playing youth sports. And I think it first starts out as, you know, it's all about having fun. And then as you advance and you progress, it becomes more and more about winning. Uh, I can say for me, even when I was a kid, it was only about winning. Uh, I think my parents can attest that I never had fun during a loss. And so to come here and to play for Rick and to see the way that he prepares for a games, the premium that he places on winning, that was exactly what I was looking for in a coach. Um, I think a lot of people talk about winning, um, say they have a desire to win, but I think anybody who's played for Rick knows that he truly has a desire to win and prepares that way as well. Um, so Rick, thank you. Um, it was a pleasure not just playing for you, but also coaching with you. Uh, we had a lot of great wins over the years, and it was definitely always fun to win with you. Uh, I next want to thank my parents, probably most importantly, who are in attendance with me here tonight. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you have done the drive from Potsdam to Buffalo or Western New York, uh, but that's a tough drive. And I can remember very few games where my parents were not in attendance. I already talked a little bit about how much winning uh, really means to me, but I can definitely say win or lose, it was always comforting to get done with a game um, and to see my parents afterwards. Uh, I could always count on my dad, win or loss, uh, to put any, any situation into the context of life. Whereas my mom, I think she was a little more like me, really appreciated the wins um, and could feel my disappointment after the losses. Um, as I was preparing for this, I was thinking back to how I actually got started playing lacrosse. And I still remember, um, I must have been my freshman year of high school, uh, going to my dad and, and telling him that I wanted to play this sport. I'm not sure if he thought that I was making this sport up, um, <laughs> but, but I feel confident that that conversation was the, the first time that he had ever heard the word lacrosse. <laughs> uh, I'm sure most of you don't know, uh, my dad grew up in Georgia, and before we lived in New York, we lived in Germany, uh, neither of which has particularly strong cultures of lacrosse. So this was, this was definitely a new sport for my family. Um, but nevertheless, both my parents were supportive from the first day that I picked up a stick until my last day at Potsdam. Um, I really learned different things from each of my parents about not just sports, but also life. Um, but one thing I really learned from both of them was the value of hard work. Uh, being a kid and, and watching, seeing the way my parents conducted themselves really instilled in me the idea that if you work hard enough, um, if you work as hard as possible, you can really elevate yourself to the next level. Um, and that's something that I brought with me every day while I was playing lacrosse here, whether on the practice field or in a game. Um, and that's really at the center of how I try and operate in my professional life now. 
And so what I really just want to say to both of you is thank you for everything. Um, I also want to thank my girlfriend, Allie, who's also in attendance with me. <laughs> uh, we, we met at Potsdam. We graduated together. Um, one of our first big adventures was to get rid of everything that we owned that couldn't fit into two cars and then making a 14-hour move from Potsdam to Charlotte, North Carolina. This is at 3 o'clock in the morning with a dog in one car and a cat in another. <laughs> um, and since then, we've really experienced a lot together, um, from home ownership, you know, new pets, new jobs, and most recently, a, a big move back up north um, to Connecticut, where we live. Uh, I think that you know, without you, none of the personal or professional success that I've had uh, would have been possible. Um, you've really made me a better person, and I'm just lucky to have you in my life. Also, want to <laughs> also want to thank some of the assistant coaches who were there while I was playing: um, uh, Bill Owen, Ben Gable, Todd Kaiser. Uh, specifically, Bill and Ben. I'm not sure what it is about the guys who played goalie uh, that I just always seem to get along well with them. Uh, I think anybody who's watched lacrosse knows that it takes a different breed of person to play goalie in this sport. Um, but I really learned a lot from all of those guys and enjoyed uh, playing with them as well. I also want to thank all the guys that I played with during my four years. Um, I think it goes without saying that this honor tonight and any personal success that I had in the field would not have been possible without everybody that I played with. Um, individual honors in lacrosse, like all team sports, are really a reflection of the team. If the team doesn't win, there's just not individual honors to go around. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all those guys. I, I met a lot of guys that I really enjoyed playing with at Potsdam. Um, and just to wrap up, I want to say thank you again to the Hall of Fame committee um, for this honor, and, and thank you to all of you for being here tonight.